Welcome back. Joining us now from Washington is Chuck Todd, host of Meet the Press, which airs every Sunday morning at 8 o'clock. So, Chuck, we just talked with a Congressman Jimmy Gomez, Democrat of L.A., who introduced the resolution to expel uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene from the House of Representatives. Uh, it takes a two-thirds vote. It's not going to happen. But he, he gave us this draconian uh, notion on the floor that people are buying flak jackets or bulletproof vests, and there's the metal detectors, and, and people are going around them, and Capitol Police is going to have to enforce it. Is that the sense you're getting? Because that is deeply troubling if in the hallowed chambers of the House of Representatives, of course, we saw what happened January 6th, we have people who are afraid for their own personal safety. Conan, it's bad. It, it is so bad. I'm out of adjectives to describe the toxicity in Capitol Hill. The distrust is at levels we've never seen, and it is a different kind of distrust. It isn't a distrust that you're, you're not going to tell the truth, or, or if I work with you, you're not going to use it against me. The distrust is beyond that. It's very personal. You've got members of Congress, one member, new member, decided to move her office uh, from Marjorie Taylor Greene too close. She feared for her own safety being that close to her. There, um, you know, the story of Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and how fearful she was. Um, and when we sadly all know that she was very famous, she's not in leadership and, and was likely a target of that mob. This stuff's real. This was a, you know, these are human reactions here. This isn't a political reaction. It, Conan, I, I, it is hard to paint the picture to describe um, how bad it is and, the, and this distrust. And with Kevin McCarthy going down and sidling up to Donald Trump um, and, and more and more likely that no accountability is going to be leveled at any elected Republican over their role in the Capitol insurrection, I think it's, I don't think this is going to get uh, reconciled anytime soon. Well, let's talk about that for a second. So Kevin McCarthy has cast his lot with the Republican Party controlled by Donald Trump. Liz Cheney, the number three ranking, or currently number three ranking House Republican, cast her lot with the traditional Republican Party of her father. Um, and and there lies, uh, we're, we're choosing sides here. What do you, what do you suspect, what do you expect right. to happen yep. with the congressman from Bakersfield? Look, I think he made a decision of what's the best way that he can stay leader of the Republican conference in the House. I don't know if he's making the decision that could ever get him enough members of Congress to allow him to someday be Speaker of the House. I think that there, but I also think he's attempting to bridge a divide that's impossible to bridge. Uh, I'm going to have Adam Kinzinger on, on Meet the Press. He's one of the 10 that voted to impeach. He's trying to start essentially a, 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 a movement uh, for Republicans that don't want to be associated with Donald Trump. And I think it's a small movement. And the question I have, Conan, is do they become their own party? Do they become an insurgency inside what currently is the Republican Party? What role do they play? Um, it, it, but right now, Kevin McCarthy, and I have to tell you, it is the most, I have to say this was a consequential decision by him. Donald Trump was fading. Donald Trump needed Kevin McCarthy more than Kevin McCarthy needed Donald Trump. And I don't think McCarthy realized it until the second that Trump super PAC sent out the photo. And now McCarthy is making it self-fulfilling that the House Republicans are tied to Donald Trump. It is a fascinating strategic decision by him. And I think I think it was a yeah, I think it's he's going to come to regret it. Uh, right. And now, it's not a coincidence that Kevin McCarthy comes from the California Republican Party. He served in the state legislature. And that party uh, has been uh, essentially mm -hmm. one of demanding to be right rather than being a majority. And, and one was, ex you know, the, the, mm -hmm. the concern was among mainstream Republicans that this party in this state was going to export itself nationally. So now you have a party that it lost the House, lost the Senate, yeah. lost the White House, has a president who was impeached twice, former president. And yes, they can be, um, they can be pure, but they can't also be a majority. A hundred percent. Do you remember the Jim DeMint line? Um, when he said he'd rather serve with 30 like-minded folks than have the majority, well, that's where they're headed. That's the line they're doing. And that, they, look, I, there's a reason Mitch McConnell put the trial balloon up to see if they could kick him out of the party. And I think McConnell found out you can't, and look where he is now, right? He's trying to find his way out of conviction, or at least, you know, he voted saying that the trial is unconstitutional. Um, there, there is a lot of Republicans that have decided to take a poll to see where things are now 
rather than to realize that Donald Trump is a fading character and, it, and he was deplatformed and the only people that are making him relevant are House Republicans who've decided he's relevant. It, it's, and now he may be, and now it may be self-fulfilling. Who's on the program? Well, I told you about Adam Kinzinger. He's one. We'll also hear from Michael Osterholm, epidemiologist, who's calling for a massive re rethinking of the vaccine distribution, i.e. maybe delaying second shots. Uh, and uh, Brian Deese, the president's uh, chief economic advisor. Uh, I saw your interview with Michael Osterholm uh, this past week. Th that was pretty stunning when he said that, listen, mm -hmm. based on this new strain that we're seeing, the worst could be yet to come. In fact, he just predicted it. The worst is yet to come when it comes to this, to infections. As my EP points out, uh, Osterholm has, every one of his prognostications have been uh, uh, on the nose accurate, not just generally accurate. Yeah, very good. Meet the press Sunday at 8 o'clock. Thanks very much for joining us and stay safe. You got it, Conan.